Okay, good morning to all of you. So, my AV is okay. Is it uh, audible, visible? Good morning to everyone. Is my AV is okay? Okay, thank you. Joshit and Samukshi, thank you. So let us uh, begin uh, today's uh, session. So yesterday we were discussing about unit commitment problem. So unit commitment problem is optimization problem. So in this optimization problem, we have to determine which units to be operated, which units to be operated for varying loads under different constraints and environments. This is what I have explained it yesterday. And this optimization problem is solved using dynamic programming. Understood. And it is not economical to operate all the units at all times. Understood. So I have taken a Raichur thermal power station and totally eight units are there, out of which seven units are of 220 megawatt and one unit is of 250 megawatt. So now we have to see how to operate these units. It is not economical to operate all these eight units at all times, understood. So for a given load, for a given constraint, which units to be operated? This is what is known as your unit commitment problem. And this unit commitment problem, you can solve it by solving your coordination equations. And if you want to try, so whether to operate all eight units, is it economical for a given load? Are operating seven units at a time is economical, or operating one and two units is economical, operating one and three is equal, or we operating one and four unit is equal, or operating unit three and unit seven is optimal. So all these combinations you have to try by solving your coordination equations. So it is a tedious task. So therefore, how to get this one so by using the dynamic programming problem so dynamic programming optimization method so we are going to solve this one clear so this is what we have said i have explained it but i was in between the dynamic programming illustration so in this uh, illustration of dynamic programming so we have considered four units so you know that unit commitment problem is we cannot operate all the units at all times because of the varying load and also considering different constraints. Okay, so for that one, to illustrate dynamic programming, so we have taken these uh, units, number of units is four. There are totally four units are there. Each unit rating is 12 megawatt and total load is 9 megawatt. So each unit is 12 megawatt means. So what is the total load all the four units can supply or can meet total load? So each unit is 12 megawatt. So there are four units are there, four into 12, that is 48 megawatt. So these four units can meet a load of 48 megawatt, understood? till maximum load of 48 megawatt it can meet. However, in this example, we are taking, we are considering for a particular load out of this 48 megawatt. So we are taking only nine megawatt load, example. So if the load is only nine megawatt, so each unit is 12 megawatt, okay. So therefore only one unit you can use it, only one unit out of four units, no need to operate all the four units. 
So just to switch on, operate only unit one, because unit one uh, rating is 12 megawatt. So it can meet this nine megawatt, but is it economical? Or you can operate unit two and four out of these four units, or three and one, or two and three, isn't it? So any combination you can find out. So which is economical? So this is what I was explaining. So before that one, some assumptions. So this is the cost of the unit one, two, three, four. Four units are there. So just because some of them I have not attended yesterday's class for them, I am briefing it. Okay, so if I start in between, they may not be in a position to understand. So there are four units, one, two, three, four, and minimum megawatt generation should be one megawatt and maximum is obviously 12 megawatt. And cost curve parameters. In the previous class, earlier class, I've taken the cost curve coefficients or the parameters as alpha, beta, gamma. Isn't it? Alpha, beta, gamma, I have taken it. But here I'm considering A, B, D. A, B, D, I am taking it. Understood? That is, for PGI square, the coefficient will be AI. For PGI, the coefficient will be BI plus DI, the constant. Understood? So depending on the some textbooks, they are using the cost curve parameters differently. So as per that one, you can go ahead. So here you see, this is A constant. For unit one, this is A constant, and this is B coefficient. For unit two, this is A coefficient, this is B coefficient, and D values are zero. And what is the cost equation for this one? So already we have discussed it is a quadratic equation of AI PJ square plus BI PJ plus DI. Earlier we have taken alpha, beta, gamma here. Isn't it? any parameter coefficients you can take it? So because in this table they have considered ABD, so even I have taken ABD. So this is nothing but cost of generation at ith unit. And PGI is the real power generation at ith unit. And what is AI, BI, DI are the cost curve parameters at ith unit. Clear? So keeping this one in mind. So first what you are going to say, <coughs> only assuming first only one unit will be operating. Let us start with one unit will be operating it. So what is the recursive relation? I have explained it uh, using dynamic programming, isn't it? So that one, what is this capital F1X means this is the cost, minimum cost. Capital F means you have to use minimum term, minimum word use it. So capital F1X is minimum cost in rupees per hour for generating X megawatt by first unit. Understood. Hope you understood. F1 of X is the minimum cost in rupees per hour for generating X megawatt. This is the megawatt by first unit. What is the small F1X? It is not the minimum cost. It is just a cost. Understood. That is the difference between this capital F and small f. What is F1X? Is the cost of generating X megawatt by the first unit. Understood. So what is this F1 is nothing but this equation, this equation. So, so this equation we have to substitute it. So when you are operating, when you are operating only one unit, so therefore what is the overall cost will be your F1 assembly. If you are operating two units, then we have to take the minimum among those two units. Minimum among those two units will be F1X. Because there is only one unit is operating, so the minimum cost is also equal to that one unit. So therefore capital F1X is equal to small F1X. So in this one, so first two, let us take what is the total load is nine megawatt. So to meet this nine megawatt, what is the total generation required? Nine megawatt only it is required. So therefore, what is the generation here? We will consider nine and nine. Substitute that one in this equation is equal to that means this equation is equal to this one, is equal to half AI PJ square plus BI plus PJ DI. Now we are having it, this is for unit one, right? This indicates this is for unit one. For unit one, what are the coefficients? 
first four parameters A, B, and D is zero for everything. So substitute it. And what is this PG? Is nothing but this one generation nine megawatt. So that you have to replace it. So that when you replace it, so you substitute this AI BI values from here. DI is zero. Then PGI is nothing but this load generation. This generation nine megawatt. So that value you have to replace it. So that is equal to you are going to get two forty two point six eight five rupees per hour. This is the cost. When you are getting this cost, when you are operating a single unit, that is unit one, you are operating unit one. Understood? So alone, when you are operating unit one alone, so what is the cost involved here? Is rupees two forty two point six eight five per hour, or two forty two point six eight five rupees per hour? Clear? Till this point, I have explained it. I have repeated for the benefit of the students who are not attended yesterday. Because of some placement activity, fine. So now let us take when two units are operating it. We have taken it as a only one unit. Now let us take two units. Understood? So combination using the recursive relation. So using dynamic programming, this is your recursive relation. I given it, isn't it? So what is this capital F N X? Today also I repeated. What is small F N Y? This is a so how we are going to define F N X is the minimum cost, minimum cost in rupees per hour for generating X megawatt by n units. I am using the word units plural by n units. See the difference. And what is this small F N Y? It is not the minimum cost. Just say cost. It is the cost of generating Y megawatt by nth unit. That means single unit. Means single unit. Yeah, understood. So by nth unit here by n units, plural. So here it is only single unit, nth unit. And what is if y load is taken by nth unit, then n minus one units will take x minus y load. N minus one will taken by x minus y. load so what is this fn minus 1 x of my x minus y is the minimum cost capital f so you have to use minimum cost in rupees per hour for generating x minus y megawatt for generating x minus y megawatt by n minus 1 units n minus 1 units this is your recursive relation from the dynamic programming So now what you do? So that means this itself is thirteen. I given the number for this one thirteen. So from this equation thirteen, computation is made for F two zero, F two one, F two two, etc. F two nine. So means what you have to do? First two units as a combination. Well, the first only one unit we have operated. We have seen what is the cost we got two forty two point eight six five something. We got it. Now let us operate a combination of two units. As per this equation, recursive relation, two units. This is one unit, and this is another unit. So two units combination we have to take it. So for this two units combination, so first let us calculate F two nine because the load given here is nine megawatt. So we will calculate F two nine. So after calculating F two nine, on the same lines you have to estimate F two zero, F two one, F two two, etc. That means what? What is F two two zero? Is the minimum cost? Minimum cost for generating two megawatt, two megawatt by two units, by two units. Understood? This is the meaning. By two units. Hope you understood this one. So what is this? F two of one is the minimum cost of generating one megawatt by two units. And what is this F two nine here? Is nothing but minimum cost of generating nine megawatt by two units. Hope you understood this one. So first, let us calculate F two nine. On the same lines, we have to evaluate these things. Why I have am taking it F two nine? Because in the example, we are taking it for nine megawatt. Is a total load. So we will take F two nine using this recursive relation. So let us see how we are going to get it. 
Okay, F29, that means using this formula, I'm going to write, what is X here? It is, it is nine. So what is the N is two, N is two, understood. F29, I'm using it, using this recursive formula, U is equal to, so minimum, so minimum of Y, minimum Y means here you have to minimize the variable Y. Here you have to minimize the variable Y this y such a way that cost should be minimum understood so what is this y is the increment in load what is the y it is the increment in load so in order to meet that increment in load you have to increment the generation you have to increment the generation by delta x that is delta x or whatever it is it is known as delta megawatt that is a step size of one megawatt we are assuming it here a step size of one megawatt we are assuming it this y is your step size of generation step size of your generation in megawatt so this step size we are assuming it as one megawatt two megawatt three in a step size of one you for better accuracy still you can assume this y as a 0.5 half megawatt Next one, 1.5, 2, 2.5, like that you can move on. Or you can assume it this Y as a two megawatts initially, as an increment of two, next two increment will be four, next increment will be six megawatt, eight megawatt, etc. So this step size Y generation is anything you can take it. Here, I am taking a step size of one megawatt Y, understood? So first it will start from Y is equal to zero, then y is equal to 1 megawatt, y is equal to 2 megawatt, 3 megawatt. So like that step size, I will be wearing this y. So finally, what is the value of, uh, that is optimized, what is the minimum value? At which value of y you are getting minimum cost? So that we are going to evaluate it. Clear. Now coming back to that equation for F29 is evaluated using this recursive relation. Now how to write here, you see, Fn. So same small f1. So I'm going to write it here. It is nothing but f2 of 0, 9 minus 0. Hope this first term. This is minimum. Fn. N is 2, no? So that we have taken it. So first I said why I will be using it as a 0. Then with an increment of 1 megawatt like that I will be using it. So y is 0 plus here fn minus 1. N is 2, isn't it? So 2 minus 1 is 1 of x minus y. What is x is 9. What is y you have taken? 0 here. So f1 of 9 minus 0. Is it clear this step? So this is a one term. This is a one combination. That means what? What is the resultant? So f2 means 0 megawatt is assigned to second unit. That means second unit is not operating zero units it is not producing anything and what about the first unit that total nine megawatts the total nine megawatt is assigned or will be met by your unit one understood so this is how we have to read it so that means that is the thing next one because what you have to do we have to write all the combinations all the combinations then out of these combinations which combinations will provide you the minimum value? So that is your minimum cost of generating 9 megawatt by your second unit. Clear? So this is a one combination, comma. So comma, the second one. So I had to increment. I have to increment this 0 by 1. If you are incrementing by 0.5, you can use it as a 0.5. Understood? So if you are using an increment of 2 megawatt, then after zero, you use this one as two megawatt. Clear? So the same equation, but this I have incremented here. You see this value I have incremented here. This one. Incremented value of delta. This is nothing but your delta megawatt. Clear? 
this is your delta megawatt increment value 0 to 1 now what will be the next term this remains same now once first term is written so this term will remain same okay fine so this term remains the same this unit 2 unit 1 will remain same only thing is this and this the load generation the generation will vary x minus y what is x is 9 and y is now it is 1 isn't it so x minus y is 9 minus 1 clear so this is the second combination so that means what one unit of generation will be met by your second unit that means second unit will be generating one megawatt and here nine minus one is eight remaining eight megawatts will be generating unit one unit one will be generating the eight units is it clear so this is what i am saying it so hope you understood this one next comma other combination what is our next combination this again i have going to increment it by step size of another one so it will become f2 of 2 so if it becomes f2 of 2 so you can see f2 of 2 right then this becomes 9 minus 2 isn't it so this becomes 2 so total is will be 9 megawatts this is how we are sharing the 9 megawatt between unit 2 and 1 by incrementing this y value hope you understood this one can anyone tell the next term? Next term. What will be the next term? We have to try all the combination. What will be the next term? Anyone? That means you are not followed or what? What is the next term? Or you can unmute yourself to type it if it is difficult. You can unmute yourself and you can answer it. What will be the next term? Yeah, I should get the answer, otherwise what happens, no? So, Gunasmita has given the answer. Okay, fine, it's right answer. Others? I think you are not followed how to write this combination. All the combination using these recursive relations, all the combinations we have to write it. Each time, whenever you are writing the combination, this should be incremented each time. The other values automatically fall in line. Saksham has given. Saksham, check the sign. So next term will be the same term, but this will be incremented by three. So if it is incremented by three means this becomes 9 minus 3. This becomes 9 minus 3. So this becomes 9 minus 3. That will be your next term. You see this one? This is the only. So you see, this is what we are incrementing it. 0 to 1, then 1 to 2. Isn't it? You can see clearly here. So 0 to 1, then 1 to 2. We are doing it. Okay, I think the notation is not coming. 
Yeah, now it might come. This is, I don't know what happened. One, two, two, <clears throat> then two, two, three, you see, this is the increment. We are doing it. Zero to one, one to two, two to three. The other term automatically will fall in line and this will not vary. That means this term and this one will not vary once you are written this first term. Only thing is here it is going to vary this point. Isn't it? So what is this? Uh, total megawatt is 9. So 9 minus 2 you will get. So like that. So what will be the next combination? What will be the next combination? What will be the next combination? Again, this term incremented to 1. So that becomes 4. F3 of 4 plus F1 of 9 minus 4. Next combination will be F2 of 5, F1 of 9 minus 5. Then F2 of 6, 9 minus 6. So till which point we will see this one. So till you get capital F as 0. Because small f we have started with 0. So you have to write all the combination till you get capital F as 0. 9 minus 7. Then again this is 7. So next point it will be incremented to 8. F2 of 8 plus F1 of 9 minus 8. Then this is F2 of 9. 9. Okay sorry this is 9. This is 9. This is nine, this is not eight, understood. So now you can see F1 of nine minus nine is zero, there ends. So this many combinations you are going to get. This many combinations you are going to get. Now close it, this is an open bracket, isn't it? So braces, now close it. That is the final combination, close it. Okay, this is how. You have to write all the combination for F2 of 9. Hope you understood. Suppose, okay, first let me complete this one. Hope this is how you have to write. Now what you have to find out, you have to find out these values. Each combination value you have to find out. After determining the combination values, which combination has got minimum value? Because the whole is minimum which value has got minimum value that will be the value of over f29 so that's what we have to do it so the next step will be so i am writing this one resultant nothing it is same as this one 9 minus 0 is 9 9 minus 1 is 8 so 9 minus 2 is 7 that's what same as this one only thing is i have removed this 9 minus 7 i have written it here same thing now what we have to do each combination value we have to determine what is the value of this combination what is the value of this combination what is the value of this combination i have to determine so how to determine this one let us see so we are estimating f29 we are moving on to the next slide please keep it in mind this recursive solution as well as now what you are doing it right now is f29 we are evaluating using recursive solution Hope till this point you understood this one. Next step is we have to evaluate the value of each combination. Okay, first F2 of 0, F1 of 9. Isn't it? Okay, that we will do it. Let me remove this one. Okay. Okay, again, the same table which has been given, unit 1, 2, 3, 4, with A and B values I represented here because we have to use these values here. That's why I represented here. Now let us calculate it, first combination. What is that first combination? Now here, what is this value here? Already we have done it. What is the value of this one? F2, 0, F1 of 9. What is the value of this one? Can anyone tell what is the value of this F2 of 0, F1 of 9? What is the value? F20 means unit 2 is not producing 
any generation zero that means it is not operating unit 2 okay so unit 2 is we are not operating that is not existing so what is existing only f19 that means unit 1 will be generating the whole 9 megawatt the unit 1 will be generating the whole 9 megawatt so we want the value of f19 what is the value of f19 already we have found that one in the earlier slide isn't it that is how much 242 point something we have found it so if i can go back i will show it to you you see here this is your f19 isn't it so what is the f19 value we got something 242 you see here 242.685 Remember this one. So that itself is your F19. Okay. So that's what the value we got it here. This combination value already we got it. Isn't it? So next com so what is this value? First value 242.685. That value we got it. Now we have 2 of 1 plus F1 of 8. We have to evaluate. We have to evaluate this combination value. So let us see that one in the next slide. So let us remove here the drawings. Okay. So next. So F2 of 1, same equation, same cost equation, use it. So F2 of 1, that means 1 megawatt of generation will be generated by second unit. So if it is so, if 1 megawatt is generated by second unit, then what is the cost? So use the cost characteristic equation and this is unit 2 isn't it unit 2 unit 2 unit 2 so what is the unit 2 cost here unit 2 this is the unit 2 costs so what is a 1.6 then what is b is 26.5 d is 0 substitute those values please be careful while substituting this is for unit 2 what are the values of A and B and D? Substitute D is anyway 0. Substitute A, B values, given values, that is equal to this one. And what is PG? PG means this bracketed term, the generation value. Understood? So it is generating 1 megawatt. It is nothing but your PG. So that value is substituted. This A, B, D from the given table, this is nothing but your this 1 megawatt. So that value is substituted. So you are going to get 27.3. I have not written the unit. So it is nothing but rupees per hour. 27.3 rupees per hour you are going to get. F2 of 1. So next what we should evaluate? What we should evaluate here? This is what we are evaluating. F2 of 1 we got. F1 of 8. We have to evaluate it. F1 of 8. So what is F1 of 8 is equal to same cost equation, use it. Same cost equation, use it. So this is which unit you are doing it? 1, unit 1, unit 1. This is unit 1, understood? So this is unit 1 we are taking it. So what is the value of A? 0.77. What is the value of B? It is 23.5 because this is unit one. So uh, corresponding A, B, D values, we have to take it. Substitute these values here, A, I, B, I, D, I. What is PG is nothing but your eight megawatt. PG is nothing but your eight megawatt. Hope you understood that one. This is nothing but your, this value, this eight is nothing but your PG, I. Substitute it, understood. So when you substitute those values, so what you are going to get you see those values substitute it so 0.77 is ai 23.5 is bi di is zero if di is also given plus you add it plus the value of given di here di is d values are zero and here pgi is your eight megawatt so when you compute this one so you are going to get 212.64 rupees per our, I have not mentioned unit, but you have to mention it. 212.64. This is the second combination, isn't it? 
So second combination, what is the total value? F2 of 1 plus F1 of 8 is the second combination. So add 27.3 plus 212.64. That will be the value of your second combination. Okay, that we will do it later. Okay. Now, this is the value we got it when we add it. This is your second combination, F2 of 1 plus F1 of 8. These two, we add it. That is 27.3 plus 212.64. It is 239.94 rupees per hour. Rupees per hour. 239.94 rupees per hour. I have not mentioned it. Okay. One co second combination is over. First combination already we have done. So we have not calculated. Second combination we have just now done. The third combination. So what is the third combination? We can see here. What is this is over. Third combination is F2 of 2 into F1 of 7, not into plus. F2 of 2 and F1 of 7, you have to take it. Why AI values are different for F1 capital F? Oh, just now I said. Okay, I will explain. Okay, now the third combination, please remember. What is the third combination? F2 of 2, F1 of 7. So find out F2 of 2, F1 of 7. So add those two. So that will be the value of our, your third combination. Understood? So that I will give it to you here. Okay, now the doubt uh, Saksham has asked, why this AI, BI values are different? for uh, small f and capital F. See, Saksham, focus on this unit. For small f, what is this one? It is unit two. Unit two. So what are the coefficients for unit two? AI and BI, these are the values. The red line I've shown. For unit two, 1.6 A and B is 26.5. That's what we have taken it. And when you come to capital F1 of eight, this is unit one. You focus here, this number. This is unit one. Unit one, A coefficient is 0.77 and B coefficient is 23.5. This is the given values. So that's why your AI, BA values are different for your small f and capital F. Why it is different? Because you see the unit is here, it is second unit and here the unit is first unit. So corresponding values we have to take. Hope you understood this one. Okay, now the second second combination is over. Third combination, F2 of 2, small f2 of 2, we have to find out. Same equation. Now this is, now you see F2, that means second unit, second unit, A, B values, substitute it, D is 0, and what is PGI? What is the value of PGI? 2 megawatt. PGI is 2 megawatt, understood. So that 2 megawatt you substitute it here. Hope you all understood this one. AI, BI for second unit, this one. I will show you. So this one. This is your second unit, understood. So that second unit values, you have to take it. Okay, so this is equal to 56.2 rupees per hour. I have not mentioned unit, please. You have to mention the unit there, rupees per hour, 56.2. And what is the other uh, thing? It is F1 of seven, sorry, F2, F2 of one, third combination is F1 of seven. You see that equation, previous equation. So F1 of seven. Same equation. Now, what is AI, BI, DI values? Here you see unit one. Unit one value. Unit one value. AI values 0.77. BI values 23.5. Those values you substitute it. And what is PGI? Is your 7 megawatt. PGI is your 7 megawatt. You substitute those values. So you will get the answer as 183.365 rupees per hour, clear?
This is what 183.365 rupees per hour. Hope you understood this one. Now, what you have, what is the total cost of this combination? Third combination, third combination. So, what is the total cost? F two of two plus F one of seven is equal to 239.565. When you add these two, so you are going to get 239.565 rupees per hour. Are you following it? So, this is the value of third combination. Okay. Now, fourth combination. What is the fourth combination? We have to find out. Can you tell me what is the fourth combination will be? F two of three plus capital F one of four. F two of three plus capital F one of four. Understood. So that combination you have to find out. So let us see here. But animation is not done. Okay, can anyone calculate and tell me the value? You have to the fourth combination value. Fourth combination value. Fourth combination will be F two of three. This is incremented by one megawatt. We are considered increment value as one megawatt. You can consider if you want better accuracy. You can consider point five megawatt. But you will get more number of combinations if your increment is less, and if your increment value is more, like two megawatt, you will get less number of combination. But you have to compromise on accuracy. Understood? So, but nominal value of one megawatt generally we will take. So we have considered that one. So next fourth combination will be F two of three plus F one of four. What is the value you are going to get? Please calculate it and tell me, because already three examples I have done it, three combinations. Fourth combination, what is the value? Because I have to see whether you understood this one or not. I am going slowly, step by step. You calculate it. What is the value of fourth combination? The fourth combination will be small f two of three plus capital f one of four. Sorry, three means nine minus three six. Sorry, six. I think the fourth combination will be. F two of three plus capital F one of six. I think earlier I said four. I think if I am right. What statement I made? If it is four, then I am wrong. So the fourth combination will be F two of three plus F one of six. Now recalculate it. And check. Okay, so you are taking F one of six, no? This one. Okay, fine. So you are given the value. The others, uh, please, uh, you try. So it is two forty one point five six. Okay. Similarly, those who are completed, calculated for fifth combination. What is the fifth combination? F two of four, F two of four, plus F one of five. Like that, all the combination values. Please calculate it. Please calculate it. So after getting these values, all the combination values. Which combination value has got minimum? That we have to pick it up for F two of nine. This is what we have to do it. Okay. So anyway, we will continue this one in the afternoon class.
three o'clock i will be engaging it we will continue and we will finish it off this unit commitment topic today at any cost i plan to complete it now only but anyway because i am explaining slowly so it is taking more time anyways so i will continue the class in the afternoon so one more thing i want to tell you uh, regarding those students who are uh, going for uh, placement activity so whatever the attendance we are entering e governance as per the actuals we are entering it i am entering it understood as per actual strength i am attending because the actual strength which i am copying it from the zoom that should match with the e governance number so that's why whatever actual attendance is there that i am entering it in the e governance if you attended placement activity i will give the attendance but in the e governance so it will be marked as per the actual class because legally it is not right that marking present here how can you be there at both places at the same time in the class as well as placement so that's why don't worry if you attended placement that will be given as a present or marked as a present in my actual attendance register however in e governance the actual things i will be marking it this is for your information please keep it so because yesterday i got so many messages i have responded also because of you people have attended placement no problem you can convince your parents that because of this one this is what sir has to so but physically i will be giving the attendance in my physical attendance register those whoever is attending the placement activity that list i will be getting it from your placement coordinator for them i will be giving the attendance in my physical attendance register however in e governance side i will be entering the value as it is actuals because that value and my the zoom count zoom uh, this one count should match clear for that purpose i will be entering the actual things so don't worry those who are attending placement you can attend happily i will be giving the attendance in my physical register hope uh, the message is clear from my end so thank you one and all i'll continue this one in the afternoon class take care bye